Well, it took some doing and I'm glad I had Jason here to help me. I've got this re-shim back into place. I took the existing shims out and I wedged this over and screwed that back in, checked that, and this door is plumb now. If I hold my level on the side of it, then the bubble is right in the middle. If anything, I cheated it uphill just a little bit because I know it's going to slide down eventually. And so my next step, and you know, this is unorthodox because I have to cut the door jam. My next step is to cut the door jam off and I've got to cut it off about a half an inch. This side style down here. I've already got one cut in it. See that cut? I cut it all the way across. Now I have to cut a half an inch out of that because it's still, it's still way up too high when I close the door. Here, let me show you. You remember before I had an inch up there. Well, right there. Now I've got about a little over five eighths of an inch right there. Okay, and so I want three sixteenths gap there because the right hand side has about a three sixteenths gap right over there at the top. Okay, now normally what you do is rehang the door and all that. And we can't go down any lower because this threshold is right down on the ground. So I'm just going to whack out a half inch off the jam and then I'm going to pry this jam down and, you know, with a crowbar and push it on down and lessen that gap. Then reattach it down here and on the sides. Okay, that's my next step. My trusty little back saw that cost me $8 with the plastic miter box. I'm using that and I'm going to run it sideways, cut off a half inch off that door jam, and I'm going to push her down. And all the people said, Amen, brother. Look at this. We've got a nice reveal here now. And what I did is I took up here and I pried that down. Remember I cut it a half an inch. Now this is exactly where it's supposed to be. Now the strike plate lines up, the deadbolt goes in. I had to I had to reattach it down here. The reason why the reason why I did not want to take this off of here. First off that would have been really difficult. Secondly there's an alarm little pad right here where they drilled a hole and that goes in and it, I think it's still hooked up to the alarm or it's an old one. So I cut it right there, wedged this down and then uh, reattach this. And I've got just enough here to spooge some caulking in there. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I caulk that before I get done. And then I close the door and I had to check the reveal. Now the reveal was not exactly what it is now it was a little bit wider and I needed some shims and I didn't have any door shims here but I had a paint stick. Where is that paint stick Jason? Here's my paint stick. I use this as a shim. It fit right on in where I needed it and I cut it off with the sheetrock with my sheetrock knife and then I had the a little piece of wood that I cut off the pine door jam and I wedged that in there and I used that as my shim. I just pried it with a big, huge screwdriver. Got a big old screwdriver here. Pried that exactly where I wanted. Put the shim in. Took this out. Attached the shim. And now I'll go ahead and put a couple more um, screws in here. And you can use finished nails too, but I've got some, some sheetrock screws and I'll just countersink the heads and then I'll put some caulking over the top of the heads anyways. And uh, I'll have to attach my my uh, trim right here that I took off and we took that off very carefully so I have to put that back on. So there's a few more things I have to do and I even up here, you remember that huge gap we had? You see there it's all lined up now and I tapped this back down and I put a little wedge in between that and the sheetrock there to keep that down. And then once I attach the trim here, I'll attach the trim on the, on the stop here and 
the sheetrock up above in, into the header. Okay, now line all that kind of stuff up. So I'm almost done with this and way better than spending $2,000 on another door. Chances are the same thing's going to happen in a few years. This may settle more and it might have to be adjusted some more. So once I, once I plumb this up, I even plumbed it up and made it uh, level, a little bit higher than level, so that next time when this sags a little bit, I'll still have enough reveal over here before it hits the door jam. And the door has settled too, and there's some, there's some joints in here that's probably, that's kinked that. So, I mean, I'm just reusing everything here. I haven't spent any money yet, and I'll probably, you know, the only thing I'm gonna need is I'm, I'm gonna reuse the nails here, and um, for the trim and stuff, and the only thing I'm going to need is the caulking. One caulk tube for $2.50 or whatever. Instead of $2,000 for a new door, and this door, how long has it been like this, Jason? About five years. About five years. And it's gotten worse along the way because I could tell that somebody had worked on these hinges from before. And I'm not done yet here. I still have to... Uh, resync the screws in here and I've got to use some longer screws because the, because some of those short screws were stripped out of the out of the, um, the hinge so I'll you know I still have a little bit of work here before I call this done but first and foremost the main thing in this whole project was to get this door pushed back up into place adjust it get the header um, door stop door jam head move down readjust this pull this down and do all that so basically the main stuff on this is done and now it's just about talking about resetting screws putting some extra screws in here and reattaching the trim so i'm going to start working on that and i'll be back to show you what i've done with that Okay, I've got the door casing all attached now. See that top left-hand edge? See how it's down just a hair? I mean, there's a shadow line up there too, but I split the difference on that, and I reattached that, and um, the only thing I still have to do is I have to caulk it. And so I'll take the caulk gun, and I'll caulk this all the way around with white, and I'll also do a thin bead on the outside edge. And I see a couple spots up high where the wall had cracked from before right up in there that's that was the settling crack see right there and then there's another one over on this side right up in there and there's also one on the other side of the window see that big old crack there that's because everything settled and again when you're on a hill that's just the types of things that happen so you see how my reveal turned out really nice now doesn't look like I did anything and that's that's my goal when I get done with this I'll, I'll also I've got some uh, attach this with little finish nails I use four penny finish nails on the inside edge because you don't have much wood from there to the to the door jam and then and then uh, the outside you can use six penny or eight penny because you have to go through thicker wood here plus the half inch sheetrock before you hit the the uh, stud on the back side and then you take a nail set and set those nails and I'll go ahead and I'll caulk those too. You know, am I going to use any paint here? No, I'm not going to use any paint. Here's another crack here. I'll, I'll just put a little bit of white caulking on that and I'll clean everything up and it will look as good as new. Oh yeah. Now here I'm just getting done over here. I put I put these screws back in and any nail holes right here I'll have to set those nails and I'll put caulking in there. Now I use some longer screws this time and I put them in. This one here you have to kind of put in at an angle because if you put it straight you're going to hit the edge of the sheetrock on the other side. So I put those in at an angle. I also put two sheetrock screws on the back side of there to su support that properly. And um, this outside trim I put that back up it fits in the same spot it's getting dark now so I've got to rush on it but um, these na these nails here when I took them off I pounded them back out okay and 
lots of times when you do that, it's gonna chip a little bit. Those are galvanized nails and they had a head. I couldn't pull them through the back side. Okay, and you could see those from before anyway, so I'll just put some caulking over that. I put this trim right in the same spot up against the grout line on the, on the rocks. And then I'll, I'll caulk that and I'll caulk the inside corner, uh, the edge all the way down. And I also put this piece of trim back on here. Okay, I had to cut it a half inch short because remember I cut the jam off a half inch and I reattached that. And I, I ended up putting screws in here instead of nails. I could use galvanized nails or finished nails or something like that. If you use, if you use screws, don't use sheetrock screws uh, because on the exterior, you, those will, will have a tendency to rust. I'm gonna go ahead and put caulking over theirs, but I use the galvanized uh, uh, coarse threaded sheetrock screws. I kind of call them sheetrock screws, but they're galvanized color. And I also put the strike plate back on. That strike plate was off and the deadbolt wasn't fitting in there. Now that I lowered this jam, it fits fine. And the screw, this top screw was just a shorty. And so I, I got a bigger screw and I pre-drilled that first. Now that screw goes right into the stud. Okay. You want to use a long enough screw so you get right through this jam, right through the gap where the where the shimming ability is, right into the 2x4. Okay, because that's your security. If you just had small screws there, sometimes people just put small screws there. If you do that, somebody can break in your house really easy. All they have to do is push on your door and what happens is the jam right here cracks. That cracks and gives out that way and they just come in. Well, the it could still crack, but this screw goes all the way in now. Okay, so, and same with the bottom one. Now, sometimes they have a different plate you can put on, not for this type of strike, but a different type of strike for a deadbolt, and it will have a backing plate that you can put two screws and two screws, and then you put the, the, the finished screws on the outside over another plate, and then that will give you more security and safety, okay? Man, I'm almost done. Thanks for joining me. Well, I got everything caulked and it's just all about cleanup now. I'm all done. I got this all taken care of in one day. Okay, took some doing and I'm glad Jason was here to help me. You might need somebody to help you. If so, grab a friend. Well, that's all I have for this time, but I'll be back with more videos.